Hey everyone, it's Lisa here from Primitive Gatherings and today I am here with Joanne Blank and we are going to go through everything you need to know about Tennessee Hummingbird. Now Tennessee Hummingbird is our summer block of the week slash month, however we want to do it. We did things a little differently this year because of the high price of shipping costs and stuff like that. So you got all your fabric at once if you're doing this. There is no room left in this right now, right? We are totally sold out. So this is for the people who are doing it, but you still probably could get yourself a pattern and get your own fabric and stuff like that if you'd wanna do it that way. But we have no kits left, we are sold out. Joanne does a wonderful job pretty much every year doing one of our pieced, hand-pieced English paper piecing. Right. Right? English paper piecing. Yeah. So we're going to go through everything. She's going to teach you all of her tips and tricks on how to do this the best way she knows how. And it might be a little bit different than the pattern, but she's going to show you how she does things because you all know we all do things differently for different reasons. So right. explain to me how to do this. Okay. Just up front. Uh, this is my method, yep. and there's a lot of them out there. You can check the internet mm -hmm. and get other ideas, and um, I want to start at the end, <laughs> okay? You're going to start so, backwards. Yes. So let's because just point I want out that to... this is the quilt behind us. So Joanne has hand-pieced this whole thing. Right, and I want to start with the, the um, binding. We put a yard of fabric, a shirting, in every kit and um, we put that amount in even though you don't need that much because if you want to cut it on the bias and you're brave you can do it like the antique quilt which is laying here and I just want to point out that this quilt design is from an antique quilt, obviously. But my friend Teresa from Mountain Creek Quilt Shop borrowed this to us, this antique. So thank you, Teresa. You're awesome. We are always looking for a great hand piecing project, but I just wanted to point that out that this is her pattern. Right. And, and the um, papers and templates and also a pattern came from paper pieces. Okay. okay. Yep. So that's how we, uh, if you're brave and want to do that, um, I am not. And Lisa okayed that I do it my way. And what is your way, Joanne? Okay. So that's why I want to start with this because I cut three inch strips off of your light and put it aside. But first, How many three inch strips? The four, mm -hmm. for the four borders. So and, and you ended up with, uh, I think, five and a half yards of fabric. So cut three yards and then um, cut three inch strips from those three yards. You don't need three yards, but you want a bunch extra because at each corner, you want that strip to go a ways out because you're gonna miter the corners. And that's real easy. When you put this three inch strip, you hand applique the uh, final triangles to it. And so when you lay it on, um, when your, your quilt is done, um, you, you, you lay it on your table upside down and you lay that strip and follow a point all the way down the row, okay? And then pin it. Okay. Then you take it to your lap and baste it. Baste it on your triangles. Then you hand applique it, and then when you get to your corners, you're going to miter them. Now this mitering is real easy because when you get to the two big pieces going across on the side, one stays straight and the other one you have to make your 45 degree angle. And that will always line up perfectly with the straight one. I always have a ruler there with a 45 degree angle to make sure it's right. And then I press it, pin it, 
and then I actually sit in the chair and hand applique the two together. Mm -hmm. And if people have problems with that, maybe we can do a little tutorial on that. Yeah, well, just do it's, one it's, little corner. Is when it you're easier do, than what when you think you're it is? It, it's easier than you think it is because you have to have it in front of you. Okay. And when you angle that, you will see that it has to match exactly mm -hmm. going the other direction. And it does then, huh? It does. It's perfect. Magic, right? You have to remember, I've done a lot of these. Okay. And only a couple of them didn't I miter a corner okay. on the end. And so uh, then when you have that all done, then you could just take your scissors and cut all the fabric away your quarter inch. You leave your quarter inch of the border um, onto these triangles and then uh, and cut away what you don't need on your corners. Just be very careful where you cut because mm -hmm. you want your quarter inch only there. So you'll cut the excess away. So one of the reasons I wanted this shown here on the edges, because even I, after all this time, when I sew the border on, I was amazed, amazed at how the quilting just, um, made this whole thing look so perfect mm -hmm. all the way it around. Is perfect. <laughs> it, it is perfect and it, it amazes me that the quilting and and then you sew your binding on and you're you're thrilled mm -hmm. because this part turned out so perfect. Right it, it really adds a little bit. I like that it's in like the stars are floating and not quite out to Everything the edge. Everything is yeah. floating. So it's just an extra step it's, to avoid it doing that but bias the, that binding. That step is a lot better than, than this step. <laughs> doing all that turning on your machine, right? right? right. As right. you're doing all those angles. But I think you kind of just pull that right. straight when you're doing it. But. So now you have your three yards there that you've cut your four strips off. I mean, you have it folded in half, so you're cutting two strips at a time. Mm -hmm. And then I just took my ruler and cut my two and a half inch strips the other direction, which would be your normal direction for cutting. Mm -hmm. And Crosswise. so for these, you do need a two and a half inch strip. And then you just go to the back. And there's really not a back or front on these. And then I drew them on. And I used to cut everything with a scissors. Oh, I tell you, I used to have some grooves. <laughs> and a friend of mine, don't ask me why it took this long, but a friend of mine gave me this for a Aww, gift. Yeah. And now on a cutting board, I just cut. Just free foam? Just, Not even with a ruler? Do you go No, I ruler? take a ruler. I take okay. I take a smaller ruler and just... And then yeah. do the short ends, okay. Save you your, do two at a time, folded? I don't. Oh, okay, why is that? I don't know, maybe I'll try that next time. <laughs> I'm all about stacking I know. and doing lots, yeah. okay. But saves your thumb mm -hmm. from your ruler. Yeah. From cutting so it's much. It's perfect. Yes. So that's your your How you're your cutting back. So that's what you're gonna get this out of, right? Yes. So okay. that's for these. All right. So you're using your template. So this, Well actually you can use your template as a cutter as right. a place to cut yeah. too. With okay. your rotary cutter. So that's yeah. that one. We did that yeah. one. So I always start with the easiest. And this is the easiest, that's your square. Mm -hmm. And you cut two and a fourth inch strip. And then this I did standing up. <laughs> uh, that I had to cut standing up too. But you have to remember, most of my um, quilting things today are sitting in my yeah, chair. Because you have a little bit of back problems. I, I have issues. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But... You don't even need your template no, for this. No, you can just use a ruler. Yeah. All you do is cut two and a fourth inch squares. Yeah. And that's it. So you don't even need a template. All right, so we got that one. But it comes in your kit because that's how the templates come. Yep. Now for these, I thought I saw on the paper pieces pattern that um, this was jelly roll friendly, but I, I did a couple strips and decided I didn't like that, and I um, 
I do it like this. And we gave you three and a half inch strips instead of three because all you need is three. But there's a reason why we did that because you can't fussy cut this quilt because nothing meets each other. So you don't have a star that you want to fussy cut. But I'm still a little you inclined towards that. You hit the dog that. in the middle? Not in the middle, oh. just so that you get the whole dog. Oh, you're you know. cut off his legs. Oh, I right. see. Right, so you would go like that, and here's the dog. And then when you go like this, there's the dog. So it gives you room to move up and down. And that way, if you have to, there was one fabric, and I don't know if that ended up in, in your kits, that was a stripe with a flower. Oh, okay. And so I always made sure that the flower was okay. somewhere. And you have room to, to move it a little bit? You do, because you got plenty of fabric. Okay. Plenty of fabric is always good. <laughs> you, you need plenty of fabric. Okay, so, so that's, that's all that. This. Okay. Yes. So it, instead of doing, so on a two and a half, if they have strips, they had to go this way? Yes. But you, you wanted to go this way, right? I, I just think you can get, I just felt like I could get more, more out. use of fabric, okay. And better use of the fabric. I just want to make sure that's how you yeah. did that, yeah. And, and besides that, there were some that were stripe. Mm. And the stripe was this direction. Yeah, I get it. And I'm fussy. You are. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> okay. She okay. has every right to be fussy. Look at how beautiful that quilt okay. is. Okay. So from there, now you have everything cut out. And so we have these. Yes. We have these. Yes. We have these. Yes. So you have it cut out, and then you're going to put your papers in. And I did these already so that I could show you how to stitch them. But this is how I put papers in. And this is my method from when I started after trying the glue method and I didn't like it. I still had the glue and I go, whoa, there must be something I can still with the, do with the glue. And there is because if you went like this and just started doing, going, they would get, they don't stay in place. And so what I do is I put a dot of glue, put it on, center it. You have to leave it dry for a little bit. You have to leave it dry for a little bit, not very long. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of stack them. And if I'm reading a book, I put it under a book mm -hmm. for a little while or my phone. <laughs> and um, that's my method. Then, now you have them, and then you, um, I based them. And I like mine sorta of tight, but you don't want it so tight. Oh, I'm gonna back up here now. I saw on Stitch with Lisa, <laughs> somebody asked about starching their strips for Tennessee Hummingbird. Oh and I thought, okay, well, a bunch of people answered, so I thought, well, I'll just wait for the video because now you'll see how I do it. I never starch my fabrics for Tennessee Hummingbird. I like them soft so I can get the needle through better. And um, I actually have a couple friends who have starch in a little, uh, bowl or something that use a paintbrush and they just starch a little bit, press it down and it sticks a little bit and they iron it and they take the papers out and do English paper piecing and without no, the papers. And no basting. No basting. And they love it, okay. which is fine. Yep. There's other methods out there. Mm -hmm. But I, I go through papers with my basting. I know you can go from corner to corner and if I had a three-fourth inch um, hexagon, I do go from corner to corner. But for basting, I just put it in. Now this is with a chenille needle, mm -hmm. my 24. You use a chenille needle, that's crazy. I do, because I don't need a fine needle for basting. All right, so I just wanna make sure we get this good. Kaylee, are we getting a good overhead? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just go all the way around. And so do only it. like one stitch per side? Correct, in between. And ah. then I secure my corners good. It's 
It's almost as fast as gluing, right? <laughs> it is. I mean, you're sitting in your chair watching a brewer game anyway, <laughs> or some sport or a show. whatever, a show, a cooking show. Yeah. And then at the end, I just go back in and make a knot. All right, that's it. So that's all that is, huh? So just four right. stitches. Yeah. Now, one of the questions that came up. I, so I is there any special one. thread that you're using for basting? Yes. Your grandma's that, the you, old in, stuff. that you inherited. <laughs> and at one point I ran out, because I do this a lot. Um, Lisa gave me some thread yeah, that was... Um, the star thread from when we first started sewing. I don't know if it was. It wasn't. It wasn't cotton. Oh. It was. It was a big, couple big um, ones that were. What is the other thread made out of? I don't polyester. Know. Polyester. Yeah. It was something else. Okay, so this one, you'll get just like this one. But I'm going to go around this one just for um, to show you something. I always start so that I end with a smaller um, corner. Not one of these peaks. Okay. So I start. Right in the middle. Or a little one wet direction or another. Okay. It doesn't matter. And this one, super you're going to have. Oh, you just do one stitch and then you're already yeah. at the corner. Okay. So it's just like the other one. And I'm only going to go a little ways. And the reason I want to emphasize it. For those who have never done English paper piecing, this one is really easy because it's just three different shapes. And here I make sure I get that corner secure. Okay. okay. So the reason I did it again was because you, with diamonds and that, you have this tail. Mm -hmm. And that stays there. That's in your quilt forever. Okay. okay. You're okay? not cutting them just, off. You, you do nothing with them. Okay. You just leave that tail. It works great. Okay? Um, we'll let's guy. just talk about thread. You do that with this guy then too, right? right? Yes. So that you based is. all your shapes. You based all your shapes. Now, did you do this? How did you tackle this? Did you do get all your shapes prepped? Or did you start with fabrics for one whole roll? Or how did that work? Like, how I did, do you tackle I did some... all these first. Okay. I had them all because yeah. if, if you ordered the kit with the complete, okay, some had a couple extra papers. Some of the complete had a few papers that were missing. So you have to do some somewhere else along the way. But, and you're going to have leftovers if you do all your strips all the way right away. I, I prepped. There's a lot of prep. Okay. But it's mindless. Right. It's easy it, prep to get ready. It's and mindless. Then, okay. Yeah. So I found this wonderful blue. Um, or a fill. Or a fill. That was so perfect for this because I like the darker um, fabric uh, for my thread color. Mm -hmm. So for my centers, I did all the way around with the blue. With the navy. And let's just, do you, do you tell everybody who's got this kit which one it was? It's, it's in my write-up. It's in your write-up. That went out with the kit. The front cover okay. that went out with the kit. So just FYI, it is 2780-350 weight yes. or fill. And then, okay, this is my first white, white quilt. <laughs> and yeah, you've lived I in was that so, warm tone like uh, I have for I so used long. to be, have a brown obsession, I guess. Right. Yeah. But, so it made me nervous because I like the darker thread. Mm -hmm. And so I bought a small white to take home to use and try it. It, it worked. It worked. It worked. And so see the thread. I, I wasn't upset with it at all. And so the, the whole quilt then I put together with white thread. But everything that didn't touch this, right? So right. all of this is, is white. white. Cuz I don't like it when I see white thread in here. So that's why you right, use the navy. Right, but that's there. where I use yeah. the navy. Yeah. 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 It's very I mean, you can't see any stitches in this at all. Yeah. You can't. You can't see any stitches. Yeah. So show us yeah. how you did that then. Okay, so now you have your whole um, batches of your colors. You have your batches of white. So you like 
put all your blues together, all your... No. No? No. This is the trick. Okay, tell us the trick. Okay. You remember all the bags you've accumulated in a drawer from yes. all the kits you've had over the last 20, 30 years? Yeah, it looks like you've used that one a time or two. Many times. Yes. Okay. I took one fabric of each one. Each color and sorted, I bet, right? And put it in the bag. For each star? No. No? For each row? For each row. Okay. So, every one, it doesn't matter, you know, multiple colors, you put them in the bags. So now you have a whole bunch of bags mm -hmm. with your colors. For each row. These are in a bag. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we now had in the kit, but I can't be sure, uh, enough fabrics for each row, a different fabric. But if it's not, then you just go to another bag. But then I would sit there and take So you're my saying thinking. you have no repeated fabric in a row? I do, because oh. we had less uh, oh, okay. 30s fabrics in the shop oh, okay. at the time. At the time. But we got another whole line mm. in before the kits were cut. Oh, so, so they I think have we're, more fabric. So they yeah. have more. Oh, okay, fabric. I get it. Okay. okay, so you sit and you pick out, I lay it out and put the blues together, pinks together, just from your bag. Mm -hmm. And then you pick one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And I make little piles of all the hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. And then sew them with the blue fabric. So, you, so now you have all your hummingbirds, hopefully by, for one row. If you take some out of a second bag for that row, it's okay because it's going to be random anyway. But then save that bag separate from your other bag so you always start with the full bag. A fresh bag. And then if you need a couple more from the next, for the next row, you take it out of the bag that you already have part of them out of. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's how I did it. Okay? Okay, so now you're going to English paper piece, you just put the front and back together, two fronts together. Right sides together. And it's blue thread. And I put a knot on the back and I hide the knot in the fold. The fold. And I make a knot, just go through both of them. And I make a knot at every corner. So at the beginning and end, there's always yes. a knot? Yes. Okay. And this is so easy for anybody who's new because it's all whip stitch. So you're just, you're you're just, just poking digging through. digging in and out. And grabbing and I, just the folds, and, not the paper. And I have seen on the internet, oh, is that as um, well stitched together as doing it on the machine? Oh, probably better. And I. I, I claim <laughs> that you put more stitches in English paper piecing than the machine does. Right, I bet too, yeah. Because I, I, so the I more like to you think... So the more you do, the less you... I mean, if you do a ton of them, do you see any thread at all? Or is there any like rule of thumb on like how far apart they should be? Or No. No? But I do a close together. Right. It's just a whip stitch. So somebody's going to ask you how, like, how many stitches you put in a side. I, I like to think it's about 25 per inch. Okay. I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. But but you're sitting there, you don't care how many you do. No, because you you're don't. just enjoying the whole thing. You, you're enjoying the process. So do you, when you were doing this, because you did this a while ago, because you we had yeah. a pretty good start on this. Yes. So did you say, okay, I'm going to sew this many hummingbirds today? Or? No. No? No. I, I don't know. How worry. many can you get down in your baseball game? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I used to think, oh my gosh, I did this whole I did this whole thing and all it was was one one baseball game. <laughs> For other things. Yeah. Because it just it just your time just flies by and you know, we have on well, that's why they call it a pastime, right? Well, and that's why it's hard to keep track of your time because right. because you do look up 
when they replay the home run or yeah. if you miss something. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you got to watch that yeah. when all, everybody yeah. starts cheering, yeah. right? Yeah. So I don't know if this is getting clear, but it, it's a whip stitch. That's so all just there is to it. Shooting through. Yep. Yep. And then you just put uh, a knot at the beginning and the end. Yep. Okay. I think they now, got that. I am not a thimble person. Mm -hmm. They get in my way. And so anything, you know, there's other th types of thimbles out there, and they all get in my way. So not t too long ago, actually since my last video, which is, you know, I love this, I now buy these, and you put it on your finger. Sometimes I wait until it's eaten up a little, the finger's eaten up a little bit. <laughs> Is but it, your it? finger actually will heal under there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can keep stitching because your finger will heal underneath the, ru the rubber. So you're saying that's going to get beat up. That finger gets beat up. Because that's my beat up finger. Because it's getting yeah. the poke of the yeah. needle. Yeah. Because you yes. know that you're through. Because I use a very small needle. Now, um, and which needle did you use for that? Basting, you use the 24 chenille. Yes. And this, I use the uh, straw. Straw needle. I use the straw. Is it and like the a 10 reason or is, 11 or? The reason is it's got such a tiny little tip. Yeah. And it can get in between. That's really fine. So, yeah, that's probably like an 11 or 12, 11 yeah, I don't, straw needle. Don't. Oh, I didn't bring a package with me. Mm -hmm. Is it Gina Kimball? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, pr I wrote it on the... You, on I wrote slip. it on her thing. I, on, on I write your, everything down for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So in your packet, you have everything. Yeah. The, I put my instructions to for the kids if, yep. for things as if I'm teaching a class. Good job. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But anyhow, you can buy these little things. Are they finger cots? Is that what they're called? I don't know. My 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 writing came off of it, or oh, okay. it was in something that you popped it out of. Yeah. But. And the small, medium, and large, and mine are medium, mm -hmm. but um, depends upon they work good on for your hand. Protecting your fingers, it's it's wonderful because they can heal, and you can keep keep Stitch. stitching. Okay, <laughs> okay. All right, so we got okay. hummingbirds all the way around. Okay, so so now you've sat and you've put in a row of hummingbirds together. This pattern on of paper pieces is really great. So you can see that there's one row and then a second row down here. Just keep in mind, when you lay that out and you've laid it out and you don't, don't have uh, the same uh, print next to each other or whatever as you go down, which I goofed up, I admit it, but uh, you try to be so careful. But when you do the second row, it's reversible. It can go one way or the other. So now you're putting your rows together, and your first row is done. You didn't have to pay too much attention, but always keep that in mind that that's your first row. And then you're going to set put your next row next to it, and then you're going to stack all these from right to left or left to right. And then when you're all done and you have your whole row put together, you pick it up and you go press it, and what if you turned it around? Just flip the whole thing it's around. Okay, right? You go back to your first row and you go, whoa, now there's a fabric next to each other, which wouldn't have been if it had been the, the way you had done it in the first place. Always keep a clip On so you know always side. which is your left hand side so that when you lay it down, it works perfectly. That's a good tip. Yeah. That, that's a, Believe me, I learned that one quick. Yeah. And so, um, and then another thing is get your two rows put together, first and second. Pause, put your next row, and don't sew it to the other row. Do two more rows together. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, you can put four rows together. And then another four rows together so that you're not having that whole thing on your lap at all times. So I did two, and then four, and then four and four. I put eight together, and I can't remember how many rows there are now, but you'd be surprised at how fast all of a sudden you realize, oh, I have to add one more row. 
and then I can put a section uh, together. The eighths together, mm -hmm. and and you're done. Okay. Okay, so this you put and you just whip it, just like the others. Mm -hmm. So is this, these With things a, have to go any way, or no, you flip you it do them? them all the same. They're all okay. they all fall right into place if you if you if you uh, um, basted them okay. all the same. Right. And then they all just fall into place, and then you use your white thread and go in just like the others. A knot on each corner, right? And a knot here in the center, okay. and then always use clips, a clip to hold it in place. And believe me, they fall perfect all the time. But just to get started here, put the clip in. Yep. Yeah. And you might even here as well put the clip in. And that works perfectly. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now you have your rows put together. And I want to talk about your rows put together. When you do your rows together, this is a big tip. You have to go together at what is common at your points. And I always chose the white because I'm using white thread, mm -hmm. okay? Take an extra stitch there and sometimes you have to move some of those tails around a little bit and make a second stitch right where your peaks are to make sure that there is something um, securing securing that together because otherwise you could miss you know off a little bit so make that extra stitch when you put your rows together one to the other always take an extra stitch because it's white on the white on the white one and you might have to move something around just a little bit especially tails mm -hmm. and that helped me a lot well, it, it gave me confidence that I was getting a good point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's no holes in this, Joanne. You did good. No. You did well, good. but it's also important that everything came together. And why not the white? Yeah. Instead of a color. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What is less then? I, I think that's it because we came from the back end yep. with the binding. Yep. You explained how and, you applied um, those. Yep. And, um, and, and follow that that paper pieces pattern for your strips and once you get it that there's two two different kinds of rows mm -hmm. two different kinds of rows put the two together and then do the next and I actually laid on the bed the row from before each time to make sure that my same fabrics weren't next to each other and then stacked mm -hmm. which I still goofed up Every every quilt I does. Mean, if You're it, not going to look for it. If it happens, it happens. Only you know, right? right? Only you know. Yeah, and I remember what color it was. <laughs> and it's okay because it's okay. what do we say? Only God is perfect. Our quilts yes, don't have to be. Right. Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> going to know. No. Mm -mm. And 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 the quilt is reversible, so it doesn't mean it's at the top or the bottom. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can go either yeah. way around. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. thank you for all of those wonderful tips. If you're you do welcome. have any questions on this, you're, uh, do you monitor the group at all, the Stitch with I, Lisa? I do. Okay. I do. So you you can access Joanne there. You can ask. Yes, you can ask a question on Joanne there. Blank but is her name. Otherwise, refer back to our write-up. Yeah, that's because I put so a lot of So here's the pattern, in. and then this came with your kit, right? Right. Okay. Well, it had to be retyped. Okay. But. Um, so I, I don't know if they made any changes. Okay. Because I haven't seen the actual one. Okay. You know, I haven't read through it. But uh, beautiful quilt. Beautiful quilt, yeah. It's, I think it's my husband's favorite yeah. that I've ever done. And I've done many. And yes. he was thrilled through this whole thing, whole process because awesome. it was getting so beautiful. Yeah. 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 All right. So that's it for okay. Tennessee Hummingbird. We appreciate you all buying this kit. And hopefully Joanne has answered some of your questions. And like I said, if not, if you have something else, always go in the Stitch with Lisa Bonjean group and we'd be happy to help you there. 
All right. Take care. And thanks again, Joanne, for joining me and, and explaining you, all your stuff. Thank right. you, everybody. Bye now. Bye.